Good morning, Robert Schoen here at the Austin Steam Train Association. We're working on 786 today. While we're waiting on some technical support to put the engine back together, about every six months or so, we like to get together, exercise the appliances, including the air compressor, the power reverse, uh, the turbine, and then we'll take, the, we'll take the drivers over here for a spin to keep the bearings lubricated. But first, let's go exercise the appliances. Well, here we are at the container where we keep all of 786's appliances. We've got four appliances for 786 plus the power reamer that we're gonna exercise in this container. Normally, all of these appliances are powered by steam, but for the purposes of exercising them today, we're gonna to power them by compressed air. The first item we have here is the dynamo. It's a, a 30 volt DC current dynamo, powers the headlights and some of the electronics on 786, and we're gonna run that first. Before we exercise all these appliances, we always add some air oil to lubricate the internal working. Brian, go ahead and put a little bit of oil in the uh, turbine here. Excellent. Now we're going to open up the valve and fire off the turbine. Nicely done. The next thing we're gonna run is what we call our cold water pump. This is the pump that pumps the water out of the tender and takes it up to the Worthington feed water heater, which heats it with steam and then pumps it into the boiler itself. Brian's gonna go ahead and put a little lubrication in here. That's good. Let's light it off. Yeah, just purely a cold water pump. So in addition to testing the, uh, the cold water pump and the dynamo, the next thing we're gonna test is our power reverser. This is the power link between our Johnson bar, which sets the valve motion on the locomotive. This engine's big enough to where you really can't manually operate the Johnson bar to set up the valve motion. So this is a steam operated device that will do the work for you. Think of it more or less as power steering for your car. So let's go ahead and test it. All right, you ready? Another appliance we will like to fire up today is our cross compound air compressor. We'll also fire that up under compressed air. Normally it's fired up underneath the steam. This is the air compressor that makes all the air for 786's brakes as well as the train behind it. All right, you ready?
All right, the last thing we're going to run this morning is the power reamer. This is the reamer that we use to ream out holes in the boiler when we're going to replace flexible or rigid stay bolts. We like to exercise this appliance. This one truly runs on air, not steam. Brian, take it away. The next thing we're going to do is what we like to call take the drivers for a spin. Original drivers for 786, original running gear. Uh, we had a donor give us money for all new brasses that we installed a couple of years ago. Everything's lubed up, so with the aid of our telehandler controlling the motion, we're going to move the drivers up and down the track gently just to keep everything lubed up and in working order. Let's bring them forward. Go on in. Okay, we're in the clear. Continue. All good? I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching it. I know some of y'all are thinking, why are these guys going to all this trouble to preserve the appliances and run them when they're not doing anything to put the steam engine back together? Well, we are going to put the steam engine back together, but I think everybody needs to understand what our challenges are here at the Austin Steam Train Association. It boils, basically boils down to time, money, and priorities. Our first and most important priority is to have a passenger train ready to go every weekend throughout the year. We derive almost 90% of our annual budget through ticket revenue, so having a reliable first-class train to operate each weekend is imperative. To that goal, we devote 90% of our volunteer effort in train crew staffing, such as onboard service volunteers, as well as our hosts in the concession car. 
we have another set of mechanical volunteers that spend several weekdays just on repairs, scheduled maintenance, and current train support restoration projects like our power car that we're finishing up and our Alco RSD-15, the 442. And a hefty chunk of that revenue that we take in goes to pay the bills and allow us to operate the train. So it's true, we do not have enough volunteer time or money to do a fast rebuild of 786, but this still remains a priority project for us. I've been a volunteer for 34 years. I started out on the first rebuild of 786 at the Westinghouse shops. I got my engineer's license on that locomotive in 1993. That was the first locomotive I ever learned to drive. So I am very committed to doing whatever I can to getting that engine back in service again. Well, what can you do to help? We are not at a point where we need extra volunteer help on the locomotive. We will let you know in the future when it is time to come out and turn a wrench or two. What we need now is cash donations towards the project. Your donations, specifically marked for the 786 fund, will help pay for necessary items like parts, machining, crane lifts, foundry castings, etc. And most importantly, it'll also help us pay for bringing in expert help that we need to get a major milestone of getting the frame onto the wheels. Please know that we are a 501c3 not-for-profit organization and that your contributions are tax deductible to the fullest extent of the law. The link to donate to this project is in the video description and in the pinned comment. Once again, we want to thank you all for watching and I want to remind you that we've made a previous video on the progress of 786 and a discussion of where we're going with it in the future, so I would encourage you to watch that. One more time, thanks for watching and thank you for your support.